Hey, what's up, everyone? Happy Monday. Special rescheduled episode from this past Friday. Hope we'll have a bunch of you can make it out tonight. It's about 5.52 p.m. here in the Bay Area, California. Who's out there? I see a few of you out there. Don't be shy. Say hi. Today's topics, we'll be talking about link building. And our sponsor for today is Hrefs. Visit their website at hdetrefs.com slash awt for Hrefs Webmaster Tools. Oh yeah. Come on guys, where are you guys from? I see a few of you out there. Don't be shy. Today's topics, we'll be talking about link building. Link building tips, link building strategies, and link building tools. Welcome to a very special episode of the SEO Video Show on this Monday evening in Northern California. Today's topics, link building, link building strategies, link building tips with our guest, Julian Goldie. Glenn, what's up, my man? <laughs> Ernesto, what's up, dude? <laughs> Anastasia, yes, it's a late show tonight. Welcome. topics link building with julian goldie our sponsor for today is hrefs visit hrefs.com slash awt Those who watched last week's episode, if you put I love SEO in the live chats or in the comments and you see your name on the screen, please claim your prize. The first few people to in, send me an email. If you're in the US, I will send you a copy of the SEO in 2022 book. I saw James Moore was in there, Rocky Majin, Adrian Danila, Casey Burridge. Ethan Lazuk, Aul Amukawa, Razul KZ, Flavia Dubri, Nico Anatilia, Stefan Krakelik. If I called your name, if you see your name in the ticker below, be sure to email me to get your copy of the SEO in 2022 book. I will mail it out to you if you are in the US. And I'll gift you a copy if you are not. A Kindle copy. First three people to email me to claim the prize will get it. All right, we got less than five minutes to go. We got link building tips today, or tonight, I'd say, with Julian Goldie. I'd love to talk about how he built his YouTube channel, his agency, how he got into SEO. And also, he also published a book. Let's talk about that too. Oh yeah guys, come on. Yeah. 
Yeah. Again, if you said I love SEO in, or commented in the live chat last week, be sure to check your name in the ticker below during the, uh, today's live stream. Send me an email. Claim your prize. And for those who've actually won a prize within the past four weeks, I didn't include your name in there. You guys know who you are. You guys are my supporters every single week. Bobby, oh man, you're up this late. What's up, my man? You got your link building questions ready? What time is it, Hobby? This is pretty late, right? All right, guys. We have some funky SEO coming down. Our boy Hobby's in the building. Today's topics, we'll be talking about link building, link building tools, link building strategies. Visit our sponsor, Ahrefs, ahrefs.com slash AWT for Ahrefs Webmaster Tools. It's free guys, it's free, check it out. All right, Javi, you got some unique questions that users cannot find it on the internet. Okay, let's, hopefully they're related to link building. We got two more minutes. Today's topics on link building. I see, still see a few out there. Don't be shy, say hi. Got less than one minute to go. Hey Fletcher, what's up, my man? How you doing? to another episode of the SEO video show where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre DeVera, aka Dre, and I curate SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest. And my guest this week is the head link builder at Goldie, and Goldie Agency, Julian Goldie. Before we get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Fletcher, Anastasia, Hobby, Glenn, Ernesto. Welcome everyone. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Now let's get on with the show. 
This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> what do SEOs use when they go fishing? Link bait. <laughs>
The best way to position yourself for success is to utilize keywords throughout your resume. What that means is that you are choosing words on your resume that directly correlate to the job you are applying for. The reason for that is there are recruiters out there literally combing through hundreds of resumes per job posting. So many applicants will apply with a lot of qualifications, but oftentimes there are specific requirements and keywords that recruiters must have in an application in order to present them to hiring managers. All right, guys, pretty much keyword stuff your resume. I mean, uh, one simple tip is to take a job posting of a company that you're applying for and pretty much just add everything they have uh, in the job posting in your resume or on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, before we get to introduce my guest today, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Are you sick of your competitors outranking you in the search results? Your solution is Ahrefs Webmaster Tools and it's free 99. This isn't one of your 14 day free trial offers. Instead, it's a super powerful tool that'll do a full website audit for you and keep working for you for free. It'll scan your site and prioritize precisely what you need to fix and improve for your search results. Visit hrefs.com webmaster dash tools for this free tool. Find the link below and by checking our sponsors, you support this show. Now let's introduce our guest. Julian has delivered over 2,200% increase in website traffic in six months. He has worked on over 1,500 successful link building campaigns. He has helped 1,200 plus clients with SEO link building. He is a published author, podcaster, and YouTuber. He is a featured on CBS, Cloudways, Lemless, and NBC. Please welcome the founder of Goldie Agency, Julian Goldie. Julian, my man, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Love it, love it. I'm doing awesome. Your video's off the hook. Your lighting's off the hook. I love your production back there. And you're <laughs> just a true YouTuber like all of us, right? <laughs> That's it, yeah. yeah exactly. Love it, um, love it. Welcome to show. That was an amazing introduction. Thank you. Well, <laughs> of course, of course. So I want to um, take it quick. I ask this question all the time uh, when... The very first question I ask all my guests that come on here in one minute, how does Julian get ranking on page one? Okay. Should I go straight into it? Just one minute, just one, no, just in one minute. Huh? Tell us like how you get <laughs> ranking on page one. Yeah. So for me, I think that SEO is simple to understand, but hard to execute. So when it comes to ranking on Google, you know, you've got like over 200 ranking factors and like the video clip you mentioned before, SEOs kind of have that way of shooting themselves in the foot to make things a little bit too complicated, use jargon, use acronyms. Mm -hmm. But from my personal experience and what works for our clients is focusing on two things, more content related to low competition, high volume keywords, and also building more links and making sure those links are high quality, filtered, relevant, and contextually relevant as well. So, yeah, love it. Your, it your very first knowledge bomb love it love it that was just in one minute love that okay you know what i gotta rewind this real quick hold on you gotta take us way back way way back and how did julian first get into seo so for me i was actually i was a sales copywriter a few years ago going back about five or six years ago and i was living out in asia at the time and i created this website because I wanted a portfolio that I could show clients. So I was like, right, I'll create this website. I can show clients I'm great at sales copy. The only issue was that the content that I spent hours and hours writing never really saw the light of day. So nobody saw the content, nobody read it. It didn't really get any love from Google. And I was like, why is that? What's going on here? So I had a few friends. I was living in Chiang Mai, Thailand at the time. Mm -hmm. And there's a big SEO community out there. So I had a few friends who saw what I was doing. So all this time I spent like creating content and writing it and trying to hustle. And then they sort of showed me the way of like, right, this is how you get that content ranking, you know, because if you're creating lots of content, but you're not building links to it, 
then most of the time Google's never going to rank it. So I got into link building that way, tried, tested and tweaked loads of different strategies. And from there, just, you know, gradually built up the site and that site started getting more traffic from building backlinks to it. The content that I'd spent like months and months writing was actually getting views eventually. I was like, oh, wait, wait a minute. Like if I can do this for myself Mm -hmm. and it's bringing me more customers, it's bringing me more traffic, maybe I can do it for clients. So I started selling this as a service as well, just trialing it with like one or two clients. My first client was actually uh, a Mongolian real estate company of all places. Mm -hmm. And from there, just grew the agency, you know, started taking on more and more clients, figuring out how to run a business, how to grow it, how to scale. And that's how I got into it, really. Love it. Okay, okay. So um, how'd you actually now, take us now, how'd you actually learn it? Were you like, did you follow certain people? Were you going on, like, were you just doing things? I know you said you were talking to a few people, so maybe you had some mentors. Like, how'd you actually learn SEO then? Yes, I was lucky enough to have really, like, some close friends who literally we would sit down working together in a co-working space or a cafe every day. So they were sort of looking over my shoulder and teaching me exactly what I was doing right and the mistakes I was making. And they were like, no, no, try it like this, do it this way, try this. So every day it was like a little mastermind where we were getting better at building links together, which mm-hmm. was awesome. So yeah, having friends who are almost kind of like mentors as well. And then also following, you know, a few influencers like, of course, uh, Brian Dean, Neil Patel. I really like Ahrefs content is great. I saw the sponsoring mm-hmm. your show today and yeah just just following seo like that also authority hacker um, oh yeah their podcast is one of my favorites i always learn a lot about link building and seo from them so yeah those sort of guys um i found very useful and then i kind of had a small amount of marketing experience anyway because like mm-hmm. the first sort of few years of my nine to five office life i was in marketing but you were just kind of like on the you know, like you were, it was a very vague details of SEO because you always had an agency doing it for you or a freelancer doing it for you. So mm-hmm. I had a vague understanding of how it worked. Yeah. yeah. Love it. So, okay, you following those um, other those mentors, you had people that you work with over shoulder. And you met, one thing you mentioned was like masterminds, right? I, I'm a true believer on masterminds when you have a group of people just yeah. willing to work at something and get better and help each other out. That's truly, truly a, a, something that I feel like other people, whether you're an SEO, marketing, whatever it is, uh, having a mastermind of that group of people is such a great way to like learn a few things. So you mentioned you mentioned that you like you said you uh, were you first started like in Chiang Mai. I mean, I thought you're actually are you still there now or where are you located now and where's your like agency like located? So I'm based in Bangkok now. Okay. So I moved. I used to live in. Well, I've lived all over the world working online. So I lived in Chiang Mai, Colombia, Peru, Mexico, Taiwan, Bali, like all over the world. Now Bangkok is my base. Mm-hmm. Actually, I have like my YouTube set up here. Yeah. So it's hard to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to leave set. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Once you've got it set up, you're ready to go. So, yeah, Bangkok is my sort of base now. That's where I'm based. My company is it's set up in Singapore, but we have clients all over the world. So most mm-hmm. of our clients are in the US. We have some in the UK, but like I say, my first client was from Mongolia. So we have clients all over the world, literally. And yeah. so are, are you just optimizing, are you doing this for like just Google then, like Google in, like in, in different regions? Is this how, how's it, how's this, um, 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 like how's, how's this work when you're doing like a lot international? So like, how do you, are you like, I mean, maybe we can get more in the weeds there, but like, so like your clients are all over the world and one, and, and, um, so again, so like, is it any different of how you're optimizing in um, other search engines? Because sometimes I hear like in other regions, search engines may be a little bit easier because, you know, the competition's less. I mean, what's your strategy on uh, these other places and other local locales? Yeah, definitely. There's, it, it depends on the competition. So for example, if you're building backlinks for an insurance company, which is usually very highly competitive, very difficult to rank mm-hmm. and you know, most of the companies you can beat them with have big budgets for SEO. That's quite different to building backlinks for say a one man band who's got their own affiliate website. And typically things will vary in terms of the quality of links that you build. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're building links for like a DR70, DR80 website, then you need to make sure that you're building backlinks of similar DR rating, I would say, Mm -hmm. similar quality, similar caliber. 
And then also the volume of links too. So if you're in a highly competitive niche, typically you need a lot more links to rank because otherwise, you know, if it's a level, if it's a level playing field and everyone's spending money in SEO, then it's a case of right, who builds the best quality links and who builds the most. Got it. All right. First, another knowledge bomb over there. But um, before we get to more deeper into links, I want to still get to more, know you a little more. I mean, we have actually a, a question that came here from Daniel. Daniel asks um, something. What's up? What's up? Income, what's up? Income split between your portfolio and client work. And when do you suggest newbies take on clients to create cash flow to scale affiliate sites? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. So for us, I mean, for me, like I like working with clients. I real, you know, for me, like I do have my own affiliate websites, I have my own portfolio of sites, but I would say in terms of like the 80, 20, the affiliate sites bring in 20% of the cash flow, and the client work brings in 80%. And that's okay. simply because for me, it's like, it's more scalable to do mm -hmm. client work. If you have a very good system, if you have a good team, then it's easier to grow a client based business. And also because it's like, a tried and tested system that we use, mm -hmm. we can replicate it and scale it quickly. With affiliate marketing, I tend to find that if you're going to do it, you need to like go all in and just focus mainly on that. It's very difficult to do both unless you have like a CEO of your affiliate side of the business and a CEO of the agency side. So for me, I figured I can either focus on one or the other, but I can't do both at the same time. So that's why I focus mainly on client work. But like I say, 20% of my income comes from portfolio work as well. So, yeah. And the other thing I would say is that uh, I have a lot of SEO friends, a lot of friends in SEO, and they have a very different like personality type to me. Mm -hmm. So for them, they would hate doing client work. They wouldn't like to work with clients or companies. They're much more comfortable when they don't have to jump on client calls, when they don't have to do any sales, and when they can just focus on building a website from behind a screen. Maybe they've got a few... BAs working for them or a team working for them. And they're much more comfortable with that versus running the agency. And the other thing I would say is that when it comes to running a client based business, mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing to know how to, it's one thing to know how to deliver the service, you know, how to do SEO, how to do link building, how to create content versus actually running a business, which is like a whole different skill set. You know, when you're recruiting, hiring, delegating, building systems. These are very different to SEO, I would say. So it depends on your personality type. Uh, but if you've already had success with SEO in the past and you're confident in scaling that system, then for sure, go ahead and, and do it for clients and see how it goes. Love it, Daniel, I hope that answers your question. Great answer, love that. Okay, we're getting a few people coming in. Hey, Red Project, welcome to the show. Okay, so we got another, I mean, I want to, before we go into more questions, I want to go into, um, quick, really quickly into um, your agency and how that become, how did you start your agency? Because I actually saw that you were actually doing a lot of Fiverr work too. Is that your agency doing Fiverr work or did your Fiverr work actually develop into your agency? Like, how, 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 tell us like the, like the background behind that. Yeah, so, well, with Fiverr, so one of the things I would say when I first started working online was that uh, you kind of get this shiny object syndrome. So you've got so many different businesses you can run. You kind of want to do them all. So for me, like originally I had a fiber business, I had a, an audio book business, you know, selling book, audio books on audible, I had the sales copywriting, I had all these different sort of business models. And then that's when I realized, right, I need to focus on one thing so I could, I could do all these different businesses, but if I really want to scale and if I want to keep growing, then I have to focus on one thing. And that's why I focus on the, the agency and, and doing link building as a service. So for Fiverr, we do sell some eBooks on there, but it's my virtual assistant who manages it. It's not me personally who delivers the work mm -hmm. and it's very scalable too. So when people buy things on Fiverr, they, they're just buying eBooks and courses from us. Uh -huh. And it's like, you click a button to deliver it. So it's not really like, client-based work love it all right guys finding something scalable that you love to do is the way to go that's the way julian does it okay so i want to let's get into like more of your um like now let's get into like more of a link building i mean uh you're like one of like my pure you're one of my first um link builders here on the show that's just purely built a lot of links and 
Um, you talk about process a lot too. So I'm curious, like walk us through like kind of the process before we talk about some tips. Like what's the process that you talk about that's scalable um, that we should be paying attention to when building links? Mm. So for anyone listening to this, I think that if maybe link building isn't your main thing and you're not hundred percent focused on it, then I should talk about Harrow link building because that's probably the most scalable way to build links that doesn't require too much of your time. So Paro is basically called helperreporter.com. And it's a site where, if you're not familiar with it already, it's a site where journalists go on there and they post like loads of different topics that they're looking for people to answer on. So like a journalist can go on helperreporter.com and they'll say, right, I'm looking for 10 website owners to give their opinion on their favorite productivity tool. And then you as a website owner or an SEO can reply to that topic and say, hey, you know, my favorite productivity tool is Trello or Asana or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, Here's here's why, here's a link to my website. And if your pitch is good, if you convince a journalist that you're authoritative and an expert, then they will post your query typically with a link back to your site. So this is very scalable because, you know, you can easily hire like an assistant or a writer to do this for you every single day. Mm -hmm. All they do is sign up to helpreporter.com they receive a list of journalists who are looking for queries to be answered. And then, you know, your writer or your virtual assistant can just spend an hour a day replying to them. And if you do that, it's just a matter of time before you get back on this. So that's like a very scalable system, I would say. Love it. So for those that have kind of don't know more about Haro, have you, did you create a video? Everyone knew, if you guys didn't know, Julian is a YouTuber as well. He has his YouTube channel with hundreds of videos with great content. I mean, is there a specific video on Haro link building on your channel? Yeah, if you check out the Harrow Link Building playlist on my channel, okay. that will teach you from start to finish exactly how to do it. And, you know, you can give those, team, those videos to your team, train them, and they can go off and do the work for you. There you go, guys. All right, we're getting we're get a bunch of questions coming in here. We have um, a few from Hobby. Hobby asks, um, low inbound links, less like less than 10 increased domain authority, true or false? No. Low outbound Sorry, links. It says, it says low outbound links, like less than 10 increased domain authority. Low mm. <laughs> so, if, I mean, like outbound links from your website to other sites mm-hmm. are important because they're basically indicating that your content is well referenced and well sourced. Mm-hmm. So, I wouldn't say there's like a typical number. Like if, if you have 10 or less coming from your website, it really depends how much content you have. So typically if we are writing like a thousand word or 2000 word article, mm-hmm. we might put like four or five outbound links on that page, but also it's the type of websites that you link out to. So for example, if Google crawls a site mm-hmm. that has tons of outbound links, but they're going to spammy sites, they might be going to casino sites or gambling sites or, you know, all sorts of dodgy low quality sites that don't have much authority that's a bit of a red flag. Whereas if your content is full of outbound links and it's going to sites that are relevant, sites that are high authority in your industry, sites that are respected, then this reflects well on your content because it looks well referenced. It looks like you've thought about the links that you're putting out and um, yeah, Google crawls it and, and says, this content looks natural. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I remember you kind of talking about like how, uh, when you look at other clients' websites and you want to build a certain amount of links, so you never go under what the domain authority is when you build links. So like someone say domain authority is what, what 70 or something. And so the only links you'll build to it are like what 70 and above or like. But it typically varies. Like some clients are comfortable with, you know, backlinks of a similar range. So it might be like DR50 to DR70 if they're a DR70 website. Other clients come to us and they say, we want links from all types of sites because we want a backlink profile that's very varied. So they'll get happily get backlinks from DR10s, DR20s, DR30s. Um, but the main thing is just making sure those links are contextually relevant mm-hmm. and that they're high quality. Whether that's, you know, you, DR is a decent metric, but you've got to use it in combination as well. So when you're looking at the quality of a site and the quality of a backlink, domain rating is important because it gives you like a, an estimation 
of how authoritative that site is. But also, you need to use it in combination with, for example, organic traffic, yep. with relevance, with the outbound link profile of that site, and also what sort of content they're producing. So domain rating is important when you're building links, but also you need to take other factors into combination too. Love it. Love it. Okay. Here's something related by Hobby. He also mentions like out of say 220, 2000, over 2000 total backlinks, um, you only have 220 from different referring IP addresses linking to your website. Can this negatively affect your Google rankings? Out of 200, like say 2,022 total backlinks, and then there are just only 220 different referring IP addresses. Can this... So, what? Well, so, if you have two, if you have two thousand and twenty-two backlinks, yeah. From, I mean, if they're from like two thousand and twenty-two different sites, if all of those URLs are unique and it's a different domain for every single website, so like if you have two thousand and twenty-two backlinks and each one of those two thousand and twenty-two is a unique domain, but they only come from two hundred and twenty-two different yeah. IP addresses. Does sound a little bit dodgy, yeah. It sounds like almost like a network. But if they're from unique domains, it, sorry, if if it's like 2022 backlinks, but actually only a hundred of those are unique, mm -hmm. then that's a bit more natural. It really depends. So I'd have to look into that more. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy to take a look on Ahrefs if you want. All right, all right. Okay, so I wanted to go into more um, back back into into your tips here. I wanted to, so we talked about Haro link building, and I mean that's for someone that just you know was like in the beginning that doesn't know about um, link building. So let's get into more some advanced stuff. I mean, like what are some stuff that you use uh, on like finding links? Like what are some like tips that you can give us? Okay, so like more advanced link building tips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so where do we start? Right. I'm going to start with the prospecting. So for example, okay. another type of link building that you can do is outreach. And this is basically where you find a list of your competitors and you plug their domain into a tool like address, for example, mm -hmm. and you reverse engineer, right? Who's linking to my competitors right now? Mm -hmm. Because if they're linking to my competitors content, maybe they'll link to me too. And if that's the case, then you can build up a list of sites that have linked to your competitors, reach out to these sites via email and say, hey, I know it's your link to joeblogs.com. Maybe you want to link to me too. Here's the reasons why. Here's the content we want to backlink to. So if we're starting from link building outreach, mm -hmm. start to finish, we can use something called the skyscraper technique. Um, this was first created by Brandy. I don't yeah. know. You're familiar with it if you've, oh, yeah. if you've tried using it yourself yeah but uh basically this works in four stages so first of all you prospect all the sites that link to your competitors mm -hmm. secondly you figure out what content have those sites linked to on my competitors website so for example if it's a guide to productivity mm -hmm. you could look at that guide of your competitors analyze it and think right if I wanted to get a backlink from these sites as well, how can I make my content better? How can I make it more of a linkable asset so that people are more likely to link back to my content instead of my competitors? So you could go through that piece of content, the, the guide to productivity, mm -hmm. and you say, right, I could include more tips. I could make it more in-depth. I could include more tools. I could make it more actionable, and I could make it more up-to-date. And basically, you want to look at all the angles that you can use to make your content better than that. And that could be throwing in some infographics, throwing in some videos, making it more engaging. If you do this, then all of a sudden, you've not only got a better piece of content than your competitors, so it's more likely to rank, but also you've got a highly linkable asset that you can now promote, reach out to other sites and say, hey, I've created this awesome guide on productivity. You link to my competitors, but we've actually got a better guide. It's better because of you know, more infographics, more videos, more content, it's more up to date, it's got more tools inside it. Would you mind linking to it? And if you did, you know, maybe we could share your content on social media or mention you on our email newsletter, something like that. So 
there are ways that you can optimize your website's content to make sure it's more linkable. Also, when you're reaching out to sites, you can set up your site so that it look so there's a lot more social proof. And if there's more social proof, mm-hmm. websites are more likely to trust you and link back to you. So if you can optimize your site and you know, you can optimize the design, you could include plenty of information about you. So for example, on my site, I've got a mention of my best selling book, Link to mm-hmm. the Mastery, my YouTube channel, the podcast, and all these elements of social proof mm-hmm. that make you look more legitimate in the eyes of a webmaster who's never seen your content before. Mm-hmm. So if you can do this, if you can follow the steps to really build more social proof on your site, then your content is much more linkable because that's the difference between you getting a link and not getting a link is trust. So build more trust, build more social proof and you get more backlinks. Love it. Trust and social proof guys. Okay. So I wanted to go into more of back to your, um, your outreach because I mean, I hear this, I do hear that a lot. And then like, like, I do get those emails from people. I mean, what's your success yeah. rate? I mean, like, like, I mean, I feel like I always ignore those when I have, cause I have a bunch of domains, like they want to like write from my blog or whatever. And I just totally ignore them. Um, and, and I mean, I, even though I possibly could probably use their you know, content to build up those sites. Cause I do have like this random sites just sitting around and I could use an update, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of not like uh, answering to those, those, those outreach emails. So like, what's your, your tip on like locking in and closing that outreach email? I mean, it's almost like a sales, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's very much like sales. It's, you know, some, some will, some won't. And it's just, it's really a numbers game. So if you can do outreach at scale, if you can send out enough emails, then you get enough backlinks back. So, but there are ways of like optimizing your whole outreach process Mm -hmm. to dramatically increase the number of backlinks you get back. And this is one of the things when I was first learning in link building, this was probably the first thing I learned to optimize because it makes such a big difference. So the first thing you want to start with is increasing your email deliverability. So if you're going to be reaching out to thousands of websites and trying to build hundreds of links, Mm -hmm. then it's really important to make sure that the more email that that your emails land in the webmaster's inbox as much as possible. So what you can do, first of all, is when you're building up an email list of websites you need to contact, start off by finding the right person to contact. So normally what people do is they'll grab a website URL and just plug it into Hunter, you know, Hunter oh, yeah. to find the email addresses and then just grab like the first email address that comes along. The problem with that is you may not be reaching the right person. And if you're not reaching the right person, chances are your emails won't get answered or they just get sent straight to the junk inbox. So if you can find the editor or the content manager on the website, then you have a much higher chance of getting a backlink because you're right. Re- you're reaching out to the right person. Next up, it's really important before you start sending emails to verify every single email address you send, because the problem is with most email addresses you find online, they're either outdated, that person doesn't work there anymore. It might be a catch all email Mm -hmm. address. And there's a very high chance it will bounce typically about 40 or 50% of the emails you find on the internet will bounce, which means that all the time you spend prospecting all the time you spent trying to find email addresses, is kind of wasted if you don't verify the email addresses first before sending them. So you can use tools like uh, Hunter have a verification tool, also clear out as well. And basically what this does is you plug in the email address and these tools can check, right? If I send an email to this person, will it actually land in the inbox or not? Mm-hmm. So straight away, you can reduce your bounce rate by 50%, which means your email deliverability goes up massively then you also need to kind of set up some verifications on your domain. So when you're sending out email addresses, say from Mm juliangoldie.com, if you send enough email addresses, if you send enough emails and enough people hit like the spam button, then you can get blacklisted, which means Mm -hmm. that the deliverability for your website goes down dramatically and this can impact your email list, your marketing, your sales, it can impact the whole of your site and, and your whole, the whole of your business. So it's really important to make sure that you protect your main website's 
deliverability. Mm-hmm. And to get around this, you can actually create like a, an alternative domain that you can use for outreach. So it could be like juliangoldie.info or mm-hmm. juliangoldie.email. Ah, and, nice. you, and it's kind of like a, yes, yeah, like a, a burner domain. Yeah, but it's still, it's still, it's still like you. Man, that's, that's a great tip yeah, there. Yeah, that's it. All right. I mean, so um, I want to go into, so you mentioned, like you were mentioning a bunch of tools. Okay. We actually have a question from Fletcher. Hi, Julian. What tools do you use to build links? So, I mean, you're mentioning Hunter. Uh, there was another one you mentioned. Well, please let us, like, let us know like some of the tools and how you use them like for your, your actual link building activities. Sure. So from start to finish, I actually have a video on this on YouTube of like okay. how uh, every single tool and why I use it. Mm-hmm. But First of all, it starts with Ahrefs. So Ahrefs is my go-to tool for prospecting. And this will give me a list of all the sites I can reach out to, their domain rating, how much traffic they're getting. So I can quickly find a list of high quality sites, filter out the crap, and uh, basically build up a list of sites that I can reach out to via cold email. After that, I import these into Google Sheets and I can build out my list of prospects and also manually go through like each line and figure out, right, do I want to reach out to this site? Does this site look like a high quality one? Is this authoritative? And you know, you might have a list of a thousand websites from Ahrefs, but actually once you've cut them down and once you've prospected them manually, you might only have a list of like 700 or 600 because mm-hmm. you're filtering out the low quality stuff. And it's really important to do that by the way, because if you, build links from low quality sites it looks unnatural and also it can land you a penalty um either mm-hmm. algorithmic or manual so you have to be very careful about which sites you get a link from yeah, yeah. and um after that mm-hmm. it's time to find the email addresses for each of these sites right so you take the urls from google sheets and you plug them into hunter hunter.io that is and this has a sort of bulk import tool where you can copy and paste hundreds of sites, plug them into hunter.io, and then find the email addresses for them instantly. And then you just shoot off any other email, th- I mean, any other um, tools, like when you send out your email, are you, what kind of like market are you using? Like, um, sir, was that Monk, um, MailChimp <laughs> or like one of those? Ah, uh, so, <laughs> so for outreach, Okay, so there's, with email marketing, there's two types, right? So you've got like the inbound, so the mm-hmm. people who have opted into your list and they're like, right, please email me because we want to get your newsletter tips or something like that. So MailChimp oh, yeah. is really good for that. But if you send like outbound emails to a cold audience you've never reached out to before and they haven't opted into your list, then it's really important not to use MailChimp because you can actually get your account blocked as you need permission to email those people. Whereas if you use an outreach tool like Lemlist or um, Mailshake is another good one, okay. then you can plug in all your prospects from Google Sheets, fill in with the email addresses and upload them to Lemlist and then set up your outreach campaign. And the good thing is about this is you can do like a mail merge. So within the email copy that you're sending, you know, for example, it's like, hey, John, uh, I noticed you linked to joeblogs.com, maybe you want to link to me too then you can customize all the fields inside Google Sheets, upload them to Lemlist, and it fills in the gaps automatically for all the bits that you want to personalize. So that could be the name, the website, something you notice about their site, the reason it's linked to you, that sort of thing. Love it, love it, list of tools there. Hopefully you guys caught all that. Okay, I wanted to go into um, a little bit more about links. So like, you, you build like links, you're getting links from other people's websites. I mean, what's your take on the different types of links? Like, like, is it like do you do any social link building? Do you do, I mean, like links from from like other web 2.0s, like like Quora, Reddit? I mean, like, can you like talk about your your mixture of links or how when, what your agency does, or is it just purely like off of other websites? Like, um. Yeah, so we purely get manually, like editorially added links. Mm-hmm. So you can, there are all these sort of different platforms you can build links on. So you can build links on blogs, on forums, comments, directories, those sort of things. Yeah. The problem with those types of links is that anyone can get a link from those sites, right? So anyone can 
set up some software, blast out their website, and all of a sudden they've got links from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, from all these. You, you, you can get software that actually posts like blog comments for you mm -hmm. across the internet and kind of spams everyone's blogs. The problem with these types of links is they're not manually editorially added, which means that anyone can get those types of links. And if anyone can get those types of links, then it's not exclusive to you and it's not very high value. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do instead is get manually editorially added links and via outreach or via Harrow where, you know, the journalist or the content editor will actually build the link themselves. So they'll go into their content, they'll add the link to you, they'll find the most relevant place to add it along with the most relevant anchor text. And that looks a lot more natural in the eyes of Google. So rather than getting tons of blog comments, which are typically no follow and are swarmed with other spammy sites, mm -hmm. if you get links from outreach where the website owner has manually added their link, then it just looks a lot more natural. Um, from our experience, we found that it's a lot more effective in terms of getting more traffic from Google. Excellent. Love it, love it. Okay, we got a question here from Red Project. We're coming close to time here, but let me just go ahead and get a few more questions here. Julian, do you personalize the first line or the whole email to each webmaster? It's, you've got to make that compromise between scalability and making sure that you personalize it. So we'll personalize different elements in every single line of the email, but we won't personalize the whole thing simply because if, if we want to get a lot of links at volume and at scale, then it's very difficult to personalize it, the whole email. But at the same time, yeah, we personalize each line of the email. Mm -hmm. We make sure that it's unique in each case. The good thing is about doing this is not only to look personal to the webmaster, but also when email service providers scan through the text of your email, it doesn't look like you're sending the same thing to 10,000 people. You know, it looks personalized. Uh, it looks like someone's actually manually writing it, mm -hmm. which means that it's a lot more likely to be delivered to that person's inbox. Whereas if you send, I'm sure you've had them where, you know, you've got someone trying to sell SEO to you mm -hmm. and they just blast out like the same email to like 10,000 or 20,000 people. And if you do that, typically it will just go straight to your junk inbox. Love it. So Love yeah, it. we personalize my slides. The other tip I would give you if, if you're writing outreach emails is to include a lot of humor. So, you know, include some puns, mm -hmm. include some jokes in there. Um, something that just makes you stand out, makes you a lot more unique from what everyone else is doing. Oh, love that tip. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm all about jokes. We do SEO jokes here. So I want you to tell us what are the jokes there that you go. actually, <laughs> you got to tell us what are the jokes <laughs> that you actually put on there. I'm curious. What, what's, what's, give, give, give us some humor. Um, do you know what? Let me, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll find one of my, one of my other oh, yeah. emails. All right. I can show you what we're talking about. And then you can, get, you can share your screen if you want. I mean, you don't have to share more. You can just read it, but I'd love to see one of your outreach emails for everyone to share here. Yeah, sure. Um, how do I share my screen? Sorry. There should be something. I don't know. I never see at the other end of the production. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. No, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've got it. So right. okay, all right. There you go. Hold on. Let yeah. me let me make you um. Right. Let me put you full here. Let me put you uh. All right. All right. Let's see what awesome. you have here. Okay. All right. So here's an example of an outreach email we've used previously, uh, and you can see that in most lines we personalized it, but we also included a lot of humor as well. So the email subject line is very straight to the point. Uh, if we've got the person's name, then it'll personalize there. And then this was for a meditation related website. So we tried to keep the theme and the puns and the jokes inside of mm -hmm. the email related to that. So you can see, like it says, Namaste, my name's uh, John from Relax Like a Boss, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And this is a premeditated approach. So I'll see it's a, a website <laughs> meditation. <laughs> I'm glad. You know, I actually did stand up comedy last year for the first time. And uh, yeah, I think that I should use some of those elements that I learned on the course. I'm just thinking out loud to myself. So, anyway, and then, yeah, like my Zen teacher says, it's okay to send emails, just no attachments because, you know, like Zen is all about 
having no attachment. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I found myself spiritually on your page about meditation. It was cosmic. So yeah, I actually posted my ultimate guide to chakra mantras, which I thought would complement your page. Would you consider linking to it? Boom chakra Laka, here it is. If you did link to it, I'd be happy to promote any of your blogs to my social media followers as a way of saying thanks. Um, and then, yeah, you can see like, for example, like this one, these are the sort of responses we get. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can see like, let me zoom in on that. Ah. So you can see the sort of responses we get from webmasters. Yeah. When we do this. Yeah. Um, this is a good example of what not to do, <laughs> you know, where your content has blocks of text like this. Mm -hmm. So if you compare our outreach email, which is like line by line, very easy to read. There's no walls of text and it's very concise and straight to the point. If you compare it to this email, you can see a massive difference in terms of like all the mistakes here, like the formatting is bad here. Uh, it's kind of like a is... big block of text and it's not very concise either where can we find a link to this because i mean it's i think some people are having a hard time seeing it on the screen oh uh, if, if um you, let me post it on the chat oh yeah want. post it in chat and I'll, I'll repost it in in um the description so you can post it in the live chat that'll be awesome all right let's awesome, get back man. all right thank you for that oh, I, oh you're okay there you go you're, i see your book back there link building mastery <laughs> All right. I mean, there's, there's so much more to talk about here, but I want to go ahead and uh, if you guys have any more questions, please ask them in the live chat now because I'm going to ask my last question. That I ask all my SEO professionals that come on here. So Julian, thank you so much for um, talking about link building here, but I want to also ask, this is a question I all ask my, um, the SEO <laughs> my SEO professionals that come on here. Also, my last question is like, if someone wanted to get into the SEO game, become an SEO professional, what would be your advice to them? So first thing to do is I would recommend learning by experience. You know, the best way to learn is to do. And if you don't practice what you learn, then you maybe haven't learned anything at all. So I think it's really important to like, just experiment with your own websites, try building your own affiliate website or trying to rank your own site. And just like I did, trying to create a test website that you can try and rank and see what works and see what doesn't. Because very quickly, just by doing that, you'll be able to see instant feedback. You'll be able to see what you did that actually worked. And you'll learn from your mistakes along the way, which you know everyone makes with SEO. So if you can build your own portfolio of sites, you will learn very quickly how SEO works. And I think you'll learn a lot quicker than if you just watch videos or courses or read about how to do it. Love it. And we got a comment here from Red Project it says, Julia, no, dear madam or sir, then. LOL. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, all yeah, right. All right. No <laughs> okay. So I want to, um, okay. If you have there's any last, I mean, if I, I usually have get, give the floor to my guests to like the, towards the end i mean if there's any like last comments and how can people get a hold of you i mean if you can rap sing i know i heard you got, got into acting you had acting classes right i mean i think there's a new thing i heard like a lot of seos yeah, getting yeah. into acting um i mean if you can sing or whatever whatever you want but i mean the, the stage is yours please let 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 the um audience know how they can get a hold of you and anything you would love to say awesome so yeah i would say if you want to get a hold of me go to juliangoldie.com and you can book in a free strategy session there where we'll teach you exactly how to get more back to your site. Or you can just download our free book on the site too, which is uh, Link Building Mastery. So it's available on Amazon. It was best selling on Amazon before, uh, but you can get it for free if you just go onto our site and click download. Yeah. And I mean, I can subject you to some singing if you want. If I don't know if you're prepared for this. Oh, no, I'm oh let's do it. Let's do it. A surprise. Oh, let's let's let's, right. let's get let's get this out here. Let me go put you uh put you on full let's mode here. It. All right. Let's we got it. a special guest performance guys from Julian Goldie. We got the guitar. Oh yeah. I hope we don't break any windows here, you know. With the singing. Oh. All right, one sec. Your guitar strap has come off.
All right, this is exciting. I love these impromptu performances by my guests. Today is gonna be the day we're gonna fall back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you gotta do. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. Back to the word is on the street, the fire in your heart is out. I'm sure you've heard it all before, but you never really had it down. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. And all the roads that lead you down the winding. And all the lights that light the way you're blinding. There are many things that I would like to say to you, but I don't know how. And I said, maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me. And after all, you're my wonder woman. Thank you, thank you so much for that special treat, Julian. If you can hold on for one quick second before I second sign off real quick. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I love it when these impromptu performances happen. And don't forget to visit our sponsor, Ahrefs, at ahrefs.com slash A-W-T. All right, till next week, see you next week. Peace out. Actually, I'll see you this Friday. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre DeVera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo!